Welcome everybody. I am so excited to welcome you back to our most recent uh, session in the Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And today we are hosting uh, an Ask Me Anything session. We have a wonderful subject matter expert in the hot seat who is actually willing to say, yeah, go ahead, ask me anything. Now, our session today lasts for one hour, and if you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guest and the attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome, and if you have something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me, and then I will share it for you or, or ask your question for you. So our topic today is the top five social media questions and answers. And I'll tell you, if we're talking about me, I've got way more than five, but we're gonna try to stick to just the top five top ones um, that everybody always wants to know about. And let me introduce you to our resident expert in the hot seat. This is Janet Kunst, and her company is called Recipes for Marketing Success. And I love this little tagline. It says, blending social media and internet marketing into mouth-watering solutions that your customers can't wait to taste. So how is that for just making you wanna know a little bit more about everything? So let me tell you a little bit about Janet. She has more than 25 years of marketing experience and has experienced firsthand the move from traditional marketing to online marketing. And her passion is for the small business owner who has the expertise in their field but when it comes to marketing, and especially online marketing, they struggle. And she knows what she's talking about because she's grown her own business over the last nine years and came to realize that what might work for one business doesn't necessarily work for all businesses. There are basic ingredients that every business owner should use in their marketing strategy. And once you have those basics down, then you can kind of mix it up and customize them to your own tastes and business goals. Janet can help you discover what will work best for you and then put those solutions in place. So without further ado, I am going to hand it on over to Janet and please tell us a little bit more about yourself and what are some of the things that people are always asking you. Thank you so much, Patty. I am so happy to be here today. And uh, just a, a little bit more about myself. Um, I actually started out in medical. And, uh, and that was before the internet came into being and all that sort of stuff. And I realized um, after that, uh, that the internet and small businesses were going to be the wave of the future. Mm -hmm. And just about the time that Facebook started being prominent and everybody was uh, looking to get a, a website done, uh, I said, I got to learn this stuff. So I've been learning since about 2005, 2007, how to uh, actually execute, well, not execute, I don't wanna kill anybody, but <laughs> to, um, to really hone in on your message online and to get to know your customers and to actually uh, be successful online with social media and your websites. And uh, one of those things that uh, I ask my clients all the time, is how are you doing on social media and either I get a glazed over look because they don't they don't know what to do um, or the first question that they ask is is it really important for me to be online mm -hmm. um, and is social media really important for my business and and right now the answer is yes and unfortunately about 24 percent of small businesses still are not using social media and they're really missing out on it um and and some of the reasons why social media is really good for small businesses is um it's cost effective the cost of entry is very low mm -hmm. i mean you can set up your facebook page or your instagram page or linkedin or or whatever social media you want to be on for nothing mm -hmm. And it's, and it's all about just <clears throat> engaging with your, your clients. So the barrier to entry is low. Um, it also gives you an ability to target your customers and really talk to them and develop that relationship, especially if your uh, customers are across the country or across the world. 
it's easier for you to talk to them through social media and find new, new customers that way. And um, third, it actually is a way to get valuable feedback from your customers so that uh, you don't feel like you're whistling in the dark. Right. Um, right. It, it, it's one of those things where you, you try something new out uh, and without some feedback, you don't know how well it's doing. So social media is a really great way to figure out what your customers want and get their feedback. And actually, it's, it's interesting because they see you as more human and they get more involved with you if you ask them those questions. Hmm. What do you think about this? Um, what would you like to see? Those types of things. Right. So, so it's, it's really the top, the top question that I get is, do I need to be on social media? And the answer is a resounding yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and it's interesting because one of the other things that people forget is that social media is a really good way to spy on your competition. <laughs> okay, say more about that. <laughs> so um, all of your competition is online. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go and follow your competition and see what they're doing online, see what's successful for them, where they're falling down. And you, and, and if you can figure out how they're not meeting their customers needs and you can fill that gap online, you'll be even more successful. Wow. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so, so it's really one of those things that you can't, it's not a matter of whether you should be online, it's a matter of can you afford not to be. Mm -hmm. Right, well, it's very relational. You know, I, yeah. the first thing that I do when I, I learn about somebody new, you know, I, I meet them somewhere or someone mentions their name, I go and look them up, you know, and, and if yeah. the information is stale, or not there, if I can't find it at all, you know, it's, that's always a, a mark against them. Maybe yeah. that's not fair, but in the plethora of information that we have, you have to have something, you know, to help narrow things down. And actually, Patty, that's a really good point because what we're finding is that people don't go to your website first. Mm -hmm. They actually look to see what others are saying about you. Mm -hmm. And, and that means you have to have a presence on social media, right? Because right. that's where they're, they're talking about you. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good point too. Yeah. That's three, that's four reasons why you should be <laughs> on social media instead okay. of three. Yeah. So the next question that I ask after some groans about <clears throat> them having to be on social media is, do I have to be on every network? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. And, and one of the reasons why is there's over 550 different social net media networks. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know about you, but I don't have time to be on all those networks and interact well on all of those networks. Right. So uh, what I usually uh, prescribe is that you figure out where your customers are hanging out online and you meet them there. So, and, and, and take into account how much time you have to spend online. Mm -hmm. um, if you have hours that you wanna spend, great. You could be on four or five or six, but if you only have a short amount of time, find the one or two social media outlets that, um, that your customers are on the majority of the time and spend your time there and cultivate your your uh, network there and, and build those relationships there. Mm -hmm. So if it's Facebook and Instagram, great. If it's more LinkedIn and Twitter, do that. Mm -hmm. But just find your audience. And not everybody is on all social media platforms either. So right. um, there's a great place to go to find all those networks. And that's a, a site called noam.com. Okay. which is K-N-O-W-E-M dot com. Okay. And it gives you a, the list of all the social networks that are out there. And you can go and, re, and do some research, kind of um, 
uh, drop in and see what the conversations are so that you can figure out whether those are your, your audiences that you want to um, talk to or not. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll give you a little bit of insight. The other thing that it'll do, and, and this is a side note, this has nothing to do with the questions, but I'll, I, I'm a giver, so <laughs> I'll give you a little more information. Um, one of the things that you need to do online is you need to be consistent with everything. Mm -hmm. So when you go to sign up for a new social media platform, you need to try and find a username that is consistent across all platforms. Mm -hmm. So uh, if that way your customers or your target audience can easily recognize you every time they switch from one social media platform to another. Oh, okay. if, so, so for example, if on Facebook you're known as ABC company, um, you want to make sure that you can get that same type of uh, username on Instagram. And if it's not available on Instagram, you may have some trouble. Mm -hmm. um, or if it's not available in LinkedIn, you may have some trouble. Uh, what noem.com does is you can actually put in a username and it'll tell you if it's taken on all the social networks or not. Oh, okay. So you can figure out what the best um, username is across all of those platforms would be for you. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. About, um, like circling from one to another, like making sure that you, let's say you're posting something in Twitter that uh -huh. maybe you use a consistent hashtag in Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn so that that's always the same hashtag or or something that calls back to your other locations too. Yes. And and ju uh, and, and that's a good point. Let's talk about hashtags for a minute. Um not all the social networks use hashtags in the same way. Mm -hmm. So, for example, on Instagram, you can use up to 30 hashtags and everybody's okay with you using multiple hashtags. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, you can just use two or three. And the hashtags may, what you wanna do is you wanna do some uh, research to make sure that they're um, being used on that platform. Mm -hmm. Because something on Instagram may not translate well to Twitter or LinkedIn. So using the same hashtags is a good idea, but you need to make sure that they're as prominent on those networks as, as you need them to be. Okay, that's interesting. So, um, you know, I've always thought of, of hashtags as being um, almost like a little marketing thing yourself, you know, like, like everything is tagged with this hashtag. But you're talking about something way different in a, in a different way of using them, right? So can you give an example of maybe what, what would be a good hashtag on Twitter and not a good hashtag on LinkedIn, for example? Well, it's, it depends on your business. Okay. Because what you have to understand is that the social media platforms are actually search engines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just as you would type into Google what you're looking for, that's how people use hashtags. Mm -hmm. So if they, so for example, if you were just using the hashtag connected women of influence, mm -hmm. not everybody's using or, or knows about connected women of influence. Mm -hmm. But if you were talking about social media, you might want to use the hashtag social media. Mm -hmm. If you're talking and, and, and you want to do some research, because again, just like with Google and we're getting a little off topic, but um, you want to find those words that people are, or those hashtags that people are searching on uh, a lot mm -hmm. that don't have a lot of posts associated with them. Oh, because okay. that way, when, when they do the search, you'll actually get to the top of those search parameters. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Instagram, if you type in social media, uh, hashtag social media, you're going to get millions and millions and millions of responses. Right. And 
you're never going to get to the top of this search in, uh, of that hashtag mm -hmm. um, unless you're posting 12,000 times a day. Right. Um, but if you find um, that you're posting about social media tips, um, that hashtag has a lot fewer um, posts associated with it. Mm -hmm. So the chances that you will show up in that search are greater than if you just put social media. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. So you really need to do some, some uh, research into what hashtags you are using. Now, if you have a branded hashtag, which would be uh, like connected women of influence, mm -hmm. that's fine because then you can, every time you post, you're using that hashtag. Every time you go to an event, you're using that hashtag. Um, so people will start to get to know that hashtag or if they know who you are, they'll start looking for you with that hashtag. Right. But just remember that the number of posts associated with that hashtag are probably limited to you and your followers. Mm -hmm. So you're not necessarily attracting other people to follow you. Right. Okay. Good. Well, that makes sense. So I kind of derailed you there. That's so. okay. <laughs> I love talking about this stuff and we yeah. probably would have gotten into it later anyway. <laughs> um, so, so we've taught, we've talked about whether it, that the fact that you need to be on social media, we've talked about that you don't have to be on every network. Um, the next question or, or complaint that I get is, I don't know what to post. Mm -hmm. So what type of content should I, I share? And most people, most companies have tons and tons of content that is already available for them. Mm -hmm. And all they have to do is start posting it. Um, so the, the four things that you need to keep in mind when you're posting to social media are is that content should inform, it should educate, it should entertain, or it should inspire. Mm. Okay. And if you can keep to those four and also add in there some engagement, so like asking questions, mm -hmm. um, getting opinions, doing mm -hmm. polls, that sort of stuff, uh, you have enough content to, um, to last you a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I also remind people of is you don't have to create all of your content. You can share other people's content mm -hmm. and that counts. Mm -hmm. So what I like to say is there, uh, there's something known as a 30, 60, 10 rule. So 30% of what you're posting is your original content. So whether it's a blog post or a, a quote that you've come up with or something like that, that's all the content that you have to create. 60% is other people's content. So what you're sharing is um, information that you think that your audience will find valuable that is related to what the products or services that you're providing so that they see you as an expert and that you're bringing them the information that they need rather than them having to go hunt for it. Mm -hmm. And then the last 10% is promotional. So, um, so if you have 10 posts, um, three of them would be your own original content. Six would be other people's content and one would be promotional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and it's interesting because, and I don't know about you, but the people online that drive me nuts are the ones that are always saying, buy my products, buy my service, buy my products. Um, you, you'll lose people if that's all you're posting. Right. I know that a lot of people, that's their business. They want to sell, but you have to get people to know, like, and trust you first. Mm -hmm. And the way that you do that is to give them information that they appreciate, um, that doesn't necessarily sell anything, um, entertain them. Mm -hmm. We all like to be entertained. Mm -hmm. We are an entertainment in, uh, world these days. 
um, and inspire them. Mm -hmm. and, and if you can do that, you have all the content that you need. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good rule of thumb to know those percentages. I too, uh, I just get so tired of somebody that it's a constant promotion. And um, that's, that's the quickest way to get unfollowed, unfriended, <laughs> unlinked, and whatever, you know, if, if yeah. you're in my feed all the time trying to sell me something, then I, you know, yeah, take you times a thousand. And it's like, you know, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I had uh, 46% of people say they will unfollow somebody if they promote too much. Mm -hmm. That's almost half. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. That, that's me too. I'll, I'll turn them off. I'll unfollow. I'll do whatever I can to get away from it. Mm -hmm. And, and the other thing too, and this applies to Facebook, um, you need to have a business page. You can't use your uh, personal page for your business. Um, you will go, eventually you will go to Facebook jail. Oh, really? And you'll get shut down. They okay. don't want you using your, your uh, personal page to promote your business. Okay. And, and a lot of, um, small, really small businesses are doing that mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. And um, you may not get in trouble today, but eventually Facebook will find out and, and let you know you need to set up a business page. That doesn't mean that you can't share it on your personal page, mm -hmm. but you can't start from your personal page to promote your business. Okay. Okay, so like have something on your business page, but then share it to your personal yeah. page. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and, and the, other, the other thing too, if you think about it, everybody on your personal page probably doesn't really want to hear about your business. <laughs> your grandmother doesn't want to know your next promotion mm -hmm. or, or whatever. So um, yeah, so keep those posts to a minimum, I'm uh, sharing them onto your personal page. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's something big, great, but not, if not, just keep it on your business page. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so once they figure out what kind of content and that the fact that they have content, um, the next question that I get is, how often do I need to post? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, it depends. Because it depends on your audience and what your audience wants. Mm -hmm. But the typical rule of thumb for a small business is that on Facebook, you just need to post once a day. Mm -hmm. Twitter is, is different because it moves so quickly. Mm -hmm. So you need to post about three to five times a day. Okay. If you're ambitious, you need to do at least 10 mm -hmm. and they can't be the same. Mm -hmm. So you can't repeat yourself all the time. Yeah. Um, Pinterest, it's about three times a day. If you want to get into the search engines, because Pinterest is basically a big bulletin board. Mm -hmm. And um, if you post only once a day, you get lost in, in all, all the messages. Mm -hmm. Um, LinkedIn, it's once a day during the work week because it's really a professional site. Mm -hmm. So people are just checking it during the work week normally. Mm -hmm. And Instagram, and this is, this is really funny, but Instagram, the average is about one and a half times a day. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you can't post a half a time, but that means that it's between one and two times a day. Okay. Um, with Pinterest, it's, or, or with Instagram, it's more important to be consistent than post multiple times a day. Okay. What do you mean by consistent? If you're posting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, mm -hmm. post Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. If, if, you're, if you're not consistent, people will not know when to look for a, a post from you. Okay. That actually goes across the board, but with uh, Instagram, it's more important to be consistent than on the other networks. Okay. 
Oh, well, that's interesting. So instead of, um, cause sometimes people are jumping all around trying to find what was the good time, you know, so that's not the thing to do. Well, you can, and, and Instagram has some great analytics, which will tell you what the best times to post. Mm -hmm. So using those times, post those times during each day, but be consistent with when you're posting. Got it. So if you're, if on Mondays, your analytics says it's best to post at one o'clock, post at one o'clock, mm -hmm. but the following Monday, don't post at 3 a.m. in the morning because mm -hmm. people won't see it. Right. Okay. Okay. And for your, your type of business or the content that you're trying to share, are there some sites that are better than others for you? For example, I've never understood Pinterest for, for the, the type of work that I do, you know, which is speaking and teaching and, and so forth. So, um, but I don't know if that's just because I don't know enough about that medium or, um, so, so again, going back to what I had said earlier, you have to figure out where your, your audience is for, for you, your audience might not be on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. um, most speakers and coaches actually do get a lot of volume on Pinterest mm -hmm. because you're sharing information mm -hmm. that people are looking for. Um, if your business is, if you're selling widgets, Instagram may not be the best place for you mm -hmm. because it's not, it's, it may not be visually um, attractive to people. Got it. So, and if you're, if it really depends on where your audience is, if there's no set rule that says, Oh, if you're in this business, you shouldn't be on Facebook. If you're in this business, you should be on Instagram or, or Pinterest or LinkedIn. It's okay. just where your, your audience is and it involves some research. Mm -hmm. I mean, ask people where they're hanging out online. Okay. Good. What, uh, and having said that, one of the things that I've discovered is that a lot of people, um, downplay Instagram because they think that it's a younger generation, a millennial generation. Um, and, that that's not their audience. The thing with Instagram is that uh, I think that the statistic is either 60 or 70% of Instagram users make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. So if you are a business owner, you may want to really reconsider Instagram mm -hmm. because your audience is probably on Instagram in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, so it, it, social media is part science and part art. Mm -hmm. You have to find that balance as to where your audience is, how much time you have and where you want to spend your time. Mm -hmm. So for example, if, you find that your audience is on Facebook and Twitter and it's evenly divided and you don't like Twitter, don't post on Twitter because you won't, your heart won't be in it. Mm -hmm. Stick with, stick with Facebook. I love Twitter. <laughs> I find it the, the, the fastest way to find out something you need to know. You know, I mean, I follow it a lot for news and, uh -huh. and what's going on, you know, and stuff. But um, I, I just love the conversations. Yeah, and, I'll, and, and, and Twitter is one of those networks that you either love or you hate. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've gone through periods where I've followed closely on Twitter. And then I've gone through periods where I could care less. Yeah. Um, but there are... Twitter is a very viable network. And if you're, if your business and your audience is on Twitter, you have to be on Twitter. Mm -hmm. If it's not, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, and, and I get so many people who get caught up in, Oh, I have to be online. I have to be on all these different channels. I don't have time to do this. I don't understand any of it. Take a break. 
take a step back, focus on one channel. When you've mastered that and you feel good about it, then consider uh, adding another channel. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too, when, when, you're, when you're posting, is you need to remember that the way that you post on each of the channels may be different. Mm -hmm. So Twitter is more about that fast um, comment. It's not, while they have pictures and video and all that sort of stuff, it's really not about that. Mm -hmm. So if your um, business is very visual, Twitter is probably not the best place for you. Okay. Um, Instagram would be better for you. Mm -hmm. If your business, if you're in the business of um, starting a preschool or something kid related, LinkedIn probably isn't the best place for you. Yeah. So you really need that. That's really key in all of this is you have to decide where to put your time and effort. Mm -hmm. And if it's one, one channel or one platform, great. If it's two or three, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But don't spend time somewhere where you don't want to be and your audience isn't. Mm -hmm. Got it. Good. That's a relief. <laughs> yes. And, 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 that's, and that's the thing is that I find that a lot of people are so overwhelmed because there's so much out there mm -hmm. that they just don't know where to start. And um, so they don't. Yeah. But once they, they, they're given permission to only be on one, one platform, it's like a big sigh of relief and they feel that they can do it. Right. And I liked what you said about get really good at that and then think about venturing out. So yeah. that gives you confidence to, to move on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what I found is that when people try to be on a whole bunch of different networks at once and they're just starting out, they're gung ho for about two weeks and then they give up mm -hmm. because they, um, it either got to be overwhelming or they didn't see any return. Right. Um, and social, it, social media, the emphasis is on social. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like going to a networking event. You can't go sit in the corner and not talk to anybody. It's about building those relationships. So you need to be online. You need to engage. It's more about, it's more than just posting. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-way conversation. It's, it's interacting with your audience. Yeah. And that's the way that they're going to get to know, like, and trust you. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that they're going to get to know, like, and trust you. Yeah. Good. Good, good. All right. What's the next thing they ask you? What's the next thing they throw at you? So, um, and, and we, talk, we talked about this a little bit. So the next thing after they ask, uh, how often should I post? is when should I post? Mm -hmm. And that, that answer is it depends. Right. Depends on when your audience is online. But there are some guidelines that you probably can't go wrong with. So with Facebook, it's best to post between 9 and 3, 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, and Wednesdays through Sundays seem to be the best the strongest posting days. Huh. I don't know why, but that's what the statistics say. Yeah. Um, on Twitter, it seems like Monday mm. through Thursday is the, are the best days to uh, post between noon and 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And Instagram, Instagram is really funny. Um, the best days to post are Monday through Friday, and the best time to post is any time except 3 p.m. <laughs> For some reason, 3 p.m. is not the best time to post on Instagram. Yeah. Maybe it's all the moms picking the kids up. Yeah. But it's not the best time to post on Instagram. Wow. That's funny. It, 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 that statistic just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And then on, on LinkedIn, it's usually Tuesdays through Thursdays between noon and 5 p.m. 
Um, LinkedIn, you don't want to post at night because most people check it when they're at work. So anytime after like six or seven at night to six o'clock in the morning, not a good time to post. Mm -hmm. But most, if you're posting during the workday, you're fine on LinkedIn. Okay. But doesn't it show up in their feed anyway? Like if they're not on, but they log on the next day and does it show up then or? So I don't know if you've noticed, but the news feeds on all of, all of the platforms, there's a lot of people posting. Mm -hmm. And so your news, so if you post something and they don't, and they don't log on until the next day, the chances are it's going to be very far down in their newsfeed. Got it. So, um, so that's why you need to pay attention to your analytics to see when people are online mm -hmm. and all of the, so the top social media platforms have excellent analytics, which will tell you exactly when, when, uh, they're, they're online, um, which posts they like the most, mm -hmm. um, which got the best engagement and all that sort of stuff. So you can tailor your um, marketing campaigns online mm -hmm. to what your customers are saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when they're online, what they like. So, so for example, if you're, if your audience likes quotes, do more quotes, right? If you don't like quotes, don't do quotes. Mm -hmm. um, if they like uh, funny memes, do more funny <clears throat> memes. Mm -hmm. They'll, they will tell you what they like and what they don't like. Okay. Okay. And, and I think that's one of those things that a lot of people forget about is that um, people will tell you if you're doing okay or not, mm -hmm. especially online. There, there's that uh, anonymity that people have mm -hmm. where they're more likely to express their opinions online than they actually would in real life. Right, right. Which can get them into trouble a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it, but it helps you because it helps you not only uh, figure out what to post online, but it also helps you define your business. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a service business, mm -hmm. they'll tell you what they, they'd like to see. Um, they may say, you know, this is one of the things that I'm struggling with. It would be great if somebody did X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. You could say, oh, I've heard this many times. Maybe this is something that I should add to my portfolio. Right, right. So what about, about, go what ahead. think about um, Facebook video? Like, you know, a lot of people are doing... Um, Facebook Live? Yeah. Video, it's a good thing you mentioned that. In the next couple of years, 80% of social media is going to be video. Mm. So, um, and, and people and the social media platforms want you to stay on their platform more than ever. Mm -hmm. So what Facebook is doing is it's, um, it's giving points to those that are posting what's called native video to Facebook, which includes Facebook Lives, which includes uploading videos directly to Facebook mm -hmm. rather than linking to YouTube or something else because they want you to stay on their platform. Okay. Okay. So if you can upload, so what I tell people is if they have a problem with uh, seeing their face or hearing their voice or anything on video, they need to get over it. <laughs> and, and, and part of it too is that video and, and I keep coming back to this um, video is the best way for people to get to know like and trust you they associate your business with a face mm -hmm. and with a voice and the more they can see and hear it the more likely they will be to remember it and purchase from you Nice. Okay. Good. So having said all that, um, there, there's a couple more questions that I get that 
um, all kind of relate to each other. Mm -hmm. The one is, uh, how do I get more followers? And the first thing that I would say is do not buy followers at all. Um, because the platforms have gotten wise to that. And uh, here, here's a question for you. Um, which would you rather have a million followers that don't interact with you or a thousand followers where 90% of them engage with you on a weekly basis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would rather have the engagement. I, you know, I haven't thought about buying followers since, I mean, like, 2010 or something, you know, when Twitter was really hitting and people were buying a bunch of followers on Twitter. Is that still going on? That is still go. It's still going on. Wow. And, and people are trying to beat the algorithms, particularly on um, platforms like Instagram, where people are trying to get become influencers. So what they're doing is they're either buying followers or they're following people to get them to follow you back and then unfollowing them and all that sort of stuff. So people are playing games. Mm -hmm. What I, I highly recommend is that you be as authentic as you can. Mm -hmm. So going back to how do you get more followers, you have to engage online. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out who you want to follow and follow them just because you want to follow them with the hope that they'll follow you back. And you have to um, provide engaging posts, right. engaging material on your, on your page. Mm -hmm. So if, if you do that and you engage with your audience, people are going to start um, listening in more and following you more. Mm -hmm. So it's really more about that organic reach than buying those followers than than trying to build that thought that number yeah um and, and um if you've noticed on facebook they there have been there's been a lot of talk over the last probably three to six months that they're putting more emphasis on engagement mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of people are going to Facebook groups. They're, they're emphasizing Facebook groups over pages. And that's part of it is they want people to be engaged. They don't want just followers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want those people who are, are um, anonymous stalkers. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, so, so, so really, that's how you get more followers. And, and, and it's really about being available. It's about answering those questions. Mm -hmm. It's about um, asking questions and answering those comments online. I had, it, it's funny, I had a, um, a mentor several years ago who, and this was probably at the beginning of when social media was really taking off, who said that um, you need to have the last word on your page. So if somebody comments, you comment back. If they comment again, you comment back. You always have to be the last comment. And while that makes sense in a, in a certain way, um, it could get obnoxious. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just engage like you would in a conversation. Right. If there's a, a natural end to the conversation and the other person ended the conversation, let the other person end the conversation. Yeah don't always have to have the last word. Yeah. And then, and another thing that um, is kind of related to that is um, the question of, do I need to connect with everyone? Mm -hmm. And you really don't. I mean, when we, you're drawn to certain people um, and others are drawn to you, you don't have to accept every friend request. Mm -hmm. You don't have to uh, be everything to everybody. Um, so just make sure that you're a little bit uh, more selective mm -hmm. of who you connect with. It could be, um, especially, here, here's the thing, on 
and, and I don't know about you, but on my Facebook personal page, I want to make sure that I know the people that I'm connecting with. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a personal page. Right. I may put something up there that I don't want everybody to know about. Mm -hmm. Now there's ways that I can, can uh, shield things and I can put together groups and all that sort of stuff. But I want to connect with people that I know. Yeah. Um, it, and, and, th and this is my personal opinion that you shouldn't connect with. You don't need to connect with everybody. Others will tell you that you need to connect with everybody and anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but my whole thing is you're building relationships with your customers. Right. Um, you want to build those relationships with those that may be your customer. And if you're trying to be everything to everybody, you're going to be no one to nobody. Yeah. You know, I, I was always, um, have always been very selective on LinkedIn. I was an early adopter of LinkedIn. I, uh -huh. I was, you know, among like the first, you know, handful of people that got onto LinkedIn. And I, I always wanted to make sure that, because I, that's a very visible professional yeah. network. And so if someone wanted to connect with me, who was someone I would not have wanted someone to see me having a cup of coffee with, you know, I would not connect with them and vice versa. If I was connected with somebody and they did something out in the business community that I didn't want to be associated with, I, I cut off that connection too. Right. And, and I, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying that there were some people who say, no, you just, anyone who wants to connect with you, accept them in. Well, I, my Rolodex is important to me, you know, and, and I wouldn't want somebody to go and say, wow, she's connected to so-and-so. Doesn't she know what, what they do or what they stand for? Right. Well, and on the other side of that, particularly on LinkedIn, I'm glad that you brought that up. The whole purpose behind LinkedIn too was to be able to, to connect other people mm -hmm. so if there if somebody came to me and said i see that you are connected to so and so could you introduce me mm -hmm. and i don't know so and so yeah i have a hard time introducing them yes yeah so and and, and like you said i want to make sure that those people that i'm connected with i trust and I, I approve of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, I, I mean, that's just my opinion. Like, like, like we said, there are others that will connect with everybody. Yeah. I have a couple of clients that did that on their personal Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And now they're struggling to figure out how to um, limit what they see. Mm -hmm. And while it's possible, I, I mean, they have like thousands upon thousands of people that are connected to their personal page. Mm -hmm. They have to go through each person and put them in the bucket. Right. Whether it's an acquaintance or a friend or, or, or whatever. Right. And that's a, that's a, that's a lot of work. <laughs> lot of work. So my, my advice is just start off if your personal page is your personal page, leave it your personal page, direct them to your business page, let them follow you on your business page and all that sort of stuff. Just, just be careful who you connect with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear all the stories of uh, stalkers and all that sort of stuff and you don't want to get connected to those. Right. Right. And, and, and on, uh, on that note, um, going back to what you should post, particularly on your, personal pages. This is pet peeve of mine. Don't post when you're going out of town <laughs> yeah. because people are looking at it Yeah. and you don't know who's seeing it. And if they know that your house is empty, they could come and rob you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and on top of that, don't post anything that you wouldn't want. Well, the saying is you wouldn't want your mother to see. Yeah. But don't post anything that you wouldn't want a potential client to see or a potential employer to see. Sure. Yeah. Because 
they are looking at everything that you're posting online. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a, I have a client that, um, is a speaker and speaks with, um, corporations and we, we had just started his social media, uh, promotions and all that sort of stuff and posting the social media. And he sent me one that he wanted to post and it was about, um, participating in the community and how important it is for businesses to get involved with their communities. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that he had on it was a, a link to an event on his personal page, which was a bar crawl. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're trying to get mid to large companies to hire you to talk to their employees about building teams and you want to post about a bar crawl mm -hmm. do you think this is really the right thing to do and once he thought about it he said no you're right yeah but that's the type of thing that you have to be cognizant of is that everybody's going to be watching what you're posting yeah 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 absolutely i, I remember one time i posted something um I had gotten uh, I had gotten a parking ticket, and the parking huh? ticket was so ridiculous. I mean, what it what it stated in there is as you know what the violation was was you know, complete. It was impossible. You know, it said huh? something like I was parked six feet from the curb, and I think what they meant was six inches, maybe. Uh -huh. You know, I yeah. don't know what yeah. they, they said six feet from the curb, and so I obviously contested it. And I got a letter in the mail that said my ticket had been discharged um, in the interest of justice, which just cracked me up. I thought it was, that was a hilarious way uh -huh. to word it. Uh -huh. So I took a picture of the letter and I posted it on Facebook. And I said, hey, you know, justice prevailed, you know, or whatever. And fortunately, a, a friend of mine saw it immediately and she she instant messaged me. She goes, you can see your address in that posting. I was like, oh, yikes, you know. So just, you know, being aware that, you know, taking a picture of you standing in front of your house or holding up a letter or things like that, that you're giving right. away a whole lot about yourself, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and with the dark web and, and identity theft and all that sort of stuff, you really, really need to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, we are coming near the end of our time, and this is just, I, I'm sure that there's a million other things. Is there, is there one last Bernie? Did we get through all five? Oh, I think we went way beyond five. Okay. I had more prepared just in case. So. Okay. Well, how about one last burning tip that you want to leave our, our listeners with? Um, so so one, of the, one of the last questions that I get is, is social media advertising worth it? Yeah. And with all the changes to, um, to the algorithms and everything, the answer is yes. Until about two years ago or so, um, it, organic search and organic content was great. But now the, the social media platforms, it, it's really becoming a pay to play. Uh-huh. So um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on advertising, mm -hmm. but you need to advertise in order to get seen. Mm -hmm. And if you can, and, and the best way to do that is to choose something that you've had a lot of engagement with on your page mm -hmm. and boost that or boost something that is relevant to what you're doing mm -hmm. and make sure, and you and I talked about this earlier, um, that you hone in your audience specifically for that post so that you get to the right people in the right area of the country with the right demographics and um, your post is more uh, ha has more of a potential to succeed than if you're just spraying and praying right as I would say right right so um, and, and test. You can do a couple of split tests where you test two different versions of your ad mm -hmm. and see which one does best. Mm -hmm. You spend $5 or so on each one and whichever one does best, 
use that one and use that one for a promotion. Right. But yeah, you, you, you most likely do need to advertise on social media. Okay. Great. Well, this has been really, really interesting. And I'm sure that uh, those who listen to the replay later are going to probably listen to it and then listen to it again. And then let's listen to it again. Because <laughs> we tend to forget this stuff, right? We get yeah. excited about it. And then we, you know, we kind of forget and, uh, and start doing that scattershot approach, which yes. is really very, very helpful at all. So so thanks so much, Janet, for being my guest today. This has been, like I said, super informative, and I'm sure that folks are going to want to get in touch with you. How can people get in touch with you? What's the best way to reach you? Um, they can go to my website, which is recipesformarketingsuccess.com, mm -hmm. or they can just email me directly at Janet, J-A-N-E-T, at recipesformarketingsuccess.com. Great. Awesome. So reach out to her and get all of your social media questions answered if they weren't answered in this session. Um, and if you're like me, every question goes to another question, goes to another question. So we could probably do this all day. But yeah. thanks, Janet, so much for being with us and for um, spending so much time with us and sharing your considerable expertise. And thanks to everyone who joined us as well. So be sure to watch for our other online forums. These are designed for you, busy professional business leaders, so that you can always access good content, good conversations conversation and continue to um, personally and professionally develop your business. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks again, Janet. And I look forward to seeing you all in our next one.